With Kevin and Kelly and Jennifer and Elliot and Anthony, uh, obviously, Jen, I thought of your father, who's done a lot in this field of sustainable high performance when we get trauma, when we face uh, an image like we had there in the first period. So what crossed your mind? Well, the first thing was the emotion was clear. You could see the concern from players from both teams in terms of what just happened. And you saw the reaction from Perry, from the coaching staff for the Leafs. You saw Matthews on the bench shaking his head. And you saw the Leafs players that were on the ice, literally one step behind the medical team to make sure that they were right there for Tavares to, to support him. You see Thornton there. And, and there are certain things that you can't control in the game. And I think all of us, the players on the ice, all of the viewers felt even just the small sense of relief when that moment happened, when yes. he lifted the hand and gave the thumbs up. And so for these players, you can't predict this. You never want to see a player in this position. So there's tremendous concern. But for all of the players now to know that Tavares is getting the best medical care possible, and for the athlete, the only thing they can do at this point is to focus on what they can control. And Simmons said, you know, we want to win this one for Johnny. So for the players to somehow refocus and to play their best because they know that that's what Tavares would want. Okay. Uh, it was upsetting to feel uh, this, and I think maybe the fight. So let's go through the hit first. Uh, Kevin, you first on, on the hit and whether you think there could possibly have been intent. It's hard to imagine anyone would, but go ahead. Well, Ron, one of those gut-wrenching moments, and you think of like Medano falling off the stretcher and Pronger collapsing, and it's just an uncomfortable feeling. And this hit... I think it's unavoidable. I think Perry's focused on where the puck's going up ice. Because of this contact by Sherratt and Tavares gets into the spin cycle, he can't protect himself. Perry's looking up ice. And at the last second, I think he probably realizes there's going to be some kind of contact. And he tries to jump out of the way. And you can clearly see his knee hit Tavares in the head. I know Tavares and Perry are friends. Whether or not you want to give Corey Perry the benefit of the doubt or not, I'm telling you at, at normal speed, at game speed, this is unavoidable. As you can see, he's not even looking at Tavares until the last second. So you, you just feel very bad for Toronto and Tavares. Perry's trying to give his, you know, console to, to his friend there. But, you know, this whole this whole time, I'm thinking Felino's having a conversation with Perry the whole time. And you know what he's saying? He's saying it's intentional. Whether it is or not, I don't care. I'm coming after you. And you could see that they weren't getting anywhere with that conversation. And eventually... You know, Weber tried to come in and be the voice of reason, and Perry just said, it's probably going to be a six- or seven-game series. I got you, I got Simmons, Bogosian. I might as well just fight you right now because you guys aren't going to let me off the hook, and that's what happened. You know, it's going to be so difficult for the Leafs to get back on track. I know they'll do their best. Jen, you talked about the trauma, and uh, I think it's shaken all of us still, so I can't imagine being in either of those dressing rooms. Uh, in terms of the fight, though, I do, like, I have the utmost respect for Nick Foligno, so he only had the ability to see it once, right, live. And so that's so much more difficult for us because we can see it over and over and over, and, uh, you know, PVR take it at different speeds so under that uh, those circumstances I understand Felino thinking that it's part of the code unfortunately it wasn't but uh, you know I just this is I didn't like this but I understand what Nick Felino is doing and again uh, it was just an ugly thing to happen in tonight's game yeah I think it was uh, not intentional it's a freak accident and as a player you get a sort of sense of uh, in invincibility there and when you get hurt like that and you see a, a teammate stretchered off it's definitely difficult to watch so the Maple Leafs got to find a way to regroup and it just shows how you know how invincible that these players are so it's very frustrating it's tough for me to even talk about it because I've been there I've had teammates been hurt in the past you got to find a way to get back into the game but right now the thoughts are with John Tavares I really appreciate what Kelly said about uh, Nick uh, thinking he had to do that because unfortunately it has the idea that well if the players thought it was intentional maybe it's intentional and that's a that's a bad leading of the of the storyline because I agree with you 100% Kevin it was not he did everything in his power to avoid one at the last second he realized uh, this was happening just one last word about uh, no new reports. I'll keep you updated, and we all will. Elliot's working. We're all trying to track uh, information as best we can. Um, but to the doctors, uh, Toronto has obviously their first-rate staff. And to see Dr. David Mulder, who's over a half a century, the leading physician of the Montreal Canadiens, their surgeon, uh, it's just uh, the greatest care that John's receiving. So there you have it. We'll take a short break and come back and maybe a comment on the game.